Good evening and welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Tonight is Thursday, March 2nd, 2017. Could I have the attendance, please? Yeah. <laughs> here somewhere. Right, I'm going to have to go from memory. That's all right. Okay. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Lightford? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Ms. Hobbs? Here. Mr. Vachon? Mrs. Bealey? Okay, thank you. Um, will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we did already have one adjustment to the agenda. Um, we made yesterday that we moved recognition up, but the agendas you see now are current. Are there any other changes to the agenda? There are no other adjustments. Okay. And are there any members of the public who wish to speak on an agenda item? Seeing none, we'll move right on to 6.0, recognition. All right, this is an exciting night because we have a couple of recognitions this evening. Um, our first recognition is going to be of a seventh grade art student, and I will ask his art teacher and our student um, to come up to the podium. So um, Marcy Alquest is an art teacher at the middle school, and recently she emailed me to let me know that one of our students, Brennan Fravert, was recognized um, at the, uh, at, for Youth Art Month and his, a piece of his artwork, which you see on the screen now, was going to be on display at the Portland Museum of Art. And the art show at the museum is running from March 1st through April 3rd. And I was so excited when I heard the news and I saw his artwork that I just wanted to meet him and also bring him to the school board so that he could be pub publicly recognized for um, his talents and his skills. So Marcy, if you wanted to say a few words and introduce Brennan. Well, it's a pleasure to introduce Brennan and um, <clears throat> talk about him a little bit because he's such an exceptional student. Um, comes in real um, happy and bright-eyed, enthusiastic, and uh, really follows his own passion to put his ideas into his artwork. And one of the things that um, I learned about Brennan from this particular piece is he's a swimmer for the Seals Club. And um, as he was, uh, he, he made the loom himself, and uh, it's a hand weaving done. And there is, um, hung in the room also, there's information, and we talk about a little bit, um, the Navajo weavers, um, and what it means to them culturally. And when, at, I don't know, you might have been about halfway done your weaving, and you were talking about, I want to put a picture of a seal in there. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh. I'm not sure if I know how to direct you in that way, but I like your idea. I'm going to see if I can find somebody to help me to help you. And um, I came back. Um, I was out of the classroom one time. I um, can't remember what happened. But anyways, I came back, and he had drawn a picture of a seal and um, put it into the weaving. And I knew at that point that I kind of had to step up and kind of meet his goal with him. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, he was um, creating the shape of the seal, which I thought really um, kind of was a, that stylized um, design shape of the Navajo weavers also. So I was just really proud of him. The, the um, craftsmanship of the work was just outstanding. And um, he's a wonderful student to work with. <laughs> um, comes in, always asks me how I am. And, you know, just this great um, personality that you would love to be around. So he's a, an exceptional Amazing. person. So great. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan, did you want to say anything or add anything to what Mrs. Alquist just said? So um, when I, when she introduced this project and uh, she had images of the Navajo weavings up on her board, and I was like, you know, I would really enjoy attempting to put a pattern in there to do something different, something that's going to stand out. Because last year and this year there were a bunch of weavings that were very good, but 
There was just, in my, in my opinion, that one touch. There just needed to be <laughs> something a little bit more. And I found it with the Navajo design. And so I incorporated what is supposed to be a seal. And it made me feel really good because it supported my team. And it made me feel different and happy. So I enjoyed it. And I hope that I have more successful ideas to come. Great. And I, I'll just add one other thing for the school board. I just learned um, from Brennan that he aspires to be a student representative to the school board. So oh, there's a pipeline emerging. Oh, good. We'll see you Jackie? This is at our place this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a youth art month at the Portland Museum of Art. Is your piece going to be there? Yes, it will be for the entire month. The entire month. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, you very much, and thank you for bringing him here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know him? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to take a picture, if you don't mind saying, but I'll, I'll introduce our other student, and then Kelly will be our photographer so that we can capture this celebration. Um, so our second student that we're going to recognize tonight is a videographer. I learned about Jacob Lewis um, from one of our teachers, Eric Huntington, who shared with me that um, Jacob had recently won a contest called What is Life's Camera Save? And so I would ask that Eric Huntington come up with Jacob, and Eric is going to tell us a little bit about the contest, um, and then we're actually going to get a chance to watch Jacob's video that he created. All right. Well, thank you all for having us here tonight. Um, so a little bit about the contest. So locally, Bitterford Savings, Saco, um, Bitterford Savings sponsors this. Um, they've been doing it for about three or four years. And Scarborough, um, you know, every time we enter, we've actually won it the last three years. So we've had pretty good mm -hmm. um, luck in this contest. Um, a couple years ago, we won a GoPro. Last year, we won a cash prize as well as this year. Um, and then. Um, beyond this point, it gets entered into a national contest um, for um, this particular. Um, it's sponsored by some other banks as well. Um, so uh, that's basically the it's um, the idea behind the project is to teach high school students how to save money. Um, you know, <laughs> responsible ways how to save money. So. Um, you know, the idea that we came up with, and I, I know Jacob can go into more detail about this, but as a class, you know, we had a ton of ideas that we talked about for weeks, and then it was really like, a, you know, everyone was involved, either acting, um, Jacob was a great director, and he actually edited this as well, um, and then everyone was involved with their acting, um, writing the script, um, and just coming up with ideas, camera people, um, getting the right angles. And some local businesses also let us, we went over to Ace Hardware, they let us film there. Um, during class time, so it was nice to kind of get out into the real world, I guess, and do some filming. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the idea behind it, to teach um, young adults how to save money, and we took a kind of humorous approach, so <laughs> I'll let Jacob expand on that a little more. Uh, so, this video had to be 90 seconds or less, which, may, which uh, forced us to be very quick and and clever with what we had, so Ours is the just the basic uh, devil and angel on the shoulder, but they're not on the shoulder. They're big people too, uh, uh, and they're trying to convince our character how to save his money or what money he has, <laughs> and that's about it. Seven hundred dollars. 
Yes, your girlfriend will love you for this. But you can get something similar at thrift shop. But this is something new. But the price difference makes up for it. Um, hello, welcome to the thrift shop. What can I get you? I was wondering if you had any nice blankets. Yes, we have these two for five dollars a piece. Oh wow, I'll take this one. Thank you. You know why I brought you here? Why? Because the best thing you can do is put your money in a savings account. Okay, sounds good. How are you? Hi, I'd like to open a Bitcoin savings account. I'd be happy to help you. Would you like to come in here and we can discuss it? Sure. Okay. So that, you know, was the, that's kind of the idea behind it, you know, helping um, some of these young adults. But I just want to reiterate how, um, you know, Jacob's just a freshman at the high school and how talented he is with, you know, photography. You know, it's one of his strong suits and video. So, you know, he definitely has a bright future. Hopefully I'll have him in class again someday. But, um, <laughs> you know, he's definitely um, on the right track to, you know, do good things in this field. So I just wanted to say that. So. Excellent. And so also, um, Jacob, you won $200 for your class as well as part of the contest, right? Yes. Oh. Excellent. Fantastic. I one question. So when will you find out this national contest? When does that run? That's, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> um, the, the official document said around this time. So, okay. so we'd like to know the results. Yeah, we'll let you know. Perfect. Get close. So. Great. Thank, Thank you again for having you. us here, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Th
Art. Just don't have that link. Okay. And so Eric and I, it's the first, it's the first. So um, Eric and I have an aggressive goal to produce one a month with both of our busy schedules. And um, I've recently realized uh, how in demand his skills are. So I'm just putting the rest of the community on notice that he's booked from now until June. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but it really, we're really excited about this. You know, one of my goals as your superintendent is to increase communication and um, when I heard of Eric's talents and he knew that I had done something similar in the past, I didn't really think I was going to have the opportunity to do it here. And like the second conversation we had, or maybe it was like the second words he said to me was, when are we going to start filming? So um, I'm really excited. We're going to show a tiny, do you want to say anything, Eric, about? <laughs> <laughs> and so the, it's important also for the community to know and the principals um, who have not yet had their episode that it's completely unscripted. Basically, Eric and I will just say, we're going to be in your building on this day and we're going to be filming. Um, and so we go around to the classrooms. We just try to find learning in action. And the, it's purposely unscripted because we want it to be real um, and really just show our community all of the amazing things that are happening. So. I think Kelly's going to play just the intro of it, just a little teaser, um, not the whole episode, which is about 16 minutes long. So, hi, I'm Julie Kuchenberger, the superintendent. Hi, I'm Julie Kuchenberger, the superintendent of schools in Scarborough. It's with great anticipation and excitement that I introduce you to a new communication program we've created called Inside Scarborough Public Schools. The vision behind this program is to virtually break down the four walls and invite the community into our schools so they can see all of the amazing things our students and staff are up to each day. In this first episode, we visit the Wentworth Intermediate School, where we'll talk with Mrs. Crosby, the principal, learn about STEM, and sneak into a classroom or two to see what our students are up to. Come on in and join us. But I just really wanted to publicly thank Eric for making this a reality, and I think it's going to be um, an awesome addition to our, our communication tools. So That's thank awesome. you, Eric. All right. Very thank nice. You. It was great. It was a good episode, by the mm -hmm. way. You watched it. That's I great. Did. Thank you. So that takes us to uh, 7.0, superintendent's report. Okay. Um, so, uh, as promised at our business meeting each month, I am delivering to you our enrollment. Um, and so, our February, our end of February enrollment data shows an increase of seven students. Um, so, at the high school, we've had one new student join us. We've had a new middle schooler join us in February. We also had two students join us at Wentworth. Um, enrollment was the same at Blue Point. And we've had two students join us at Eight Corners and one additional student join us at Pleasant Hill. So that brings our total enrollment to date up to 2,986 students. And just to kind of remind you back to September, we, were, we started the year with 2,969 students. So we've seen about a um, 27 student increase, if my math is correct, 17 student increase. Um, so. That's our enrollment update. Uh, the next update that I had, uh, general update district-wide, was about our community dialogue that's coming up. And so um, we are really getting excited about the community dialogue that is scheduled to be on Thursday, March 9th from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, this will look very similar to the community dialogues that have happened in the past. And a light dinner will be served from 5 to 5.30. We're really hoping to have a lot of community members attend and give their input. 
This is a chance for us to really chart the course of our future as a community. And so um, teachers are invited, students are invited, community <coughs> members are invited. Of course, our leadership team um, is invited, our school board, our town council, really anyone, anyone who is passionate about the future of the Scarborough Public Schools is welcome to attend. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and uh, that concludes my updates for tonight. I pass it on to you. Well, no, the NEAP oh. update was in that. I'm sorry. Well, 7.2. Uh, I'm yeah. all excited update. with all these updates. So, yeah. um, yes, tonight we do have a NEAP update. So, Mr. Principal Creech is here from the high school along with one of our teachers and the, one of the chairs of the NEAP committee, um, David O'Connor. And also in the audience, I'll just recognize that Catherine Ruby is here, our Director of Teaching and Learning at the high school, and Principal Hathorn is here as well. So thank you all for being here and supporting us tonight. David? Good evening. Good thank evening. you for having us here. I want to officially say that if part of that programming, if one of Eric's responsibilities is hair and makeup, he's got a large task ahead of him when he gets to the high school. <laughs> um, you know, we're really pleased to come to you tonight and give you an update, um, as Ms. Kuchenberger mentioned, on what's been happening with our NEAS accreditation process. So as all of you know, um, we are right smack dab in the middle of our self-study process. But a part of the work that's happening behind the scenes, uh, in addition to the self-study process, is the planning and implementation of what's going to be happening in the next phase. So the last time we spoke, um, I had Lauren Bornstein, who was one of the co-chairs for the steering committee here. And tonight we have David O'Connor, who is one of our math teachers, math department head, and he is the other co-chair for the steering committee. Uh, Catherine Ruby, myself, David and Lauren, and Monique Culbertson make up the steering committee. And David will talk a little bit tonight about some of the roles and responsibilities we've had. So I'd like to turn it over to Mr. O'Connor. Good evening. Uh, I'd like you guys to know that the NES self-study process is going well, and we really feel like we have are on pace to finish the report by the end of this academic year. Um, I want to thank the board, the professional development structures that we put in, thanks to the time that you provided to the high school, has really contributed to a quality process, and we want to say, or at least I want to say, thank you for the time. Um, it's really been an opportunity to engage in a collaborative, interdisciplinary endeavor, and it's been a great benefit to the high school. So it's been of great value, at least from my perspective. <coughs> oh, <yeah>. um, <laughs> so this slide is just the membership of the steering committee. Lauren Bornstein, you met last fall when she did the NEASC update. I'm David O'Connor, Ms. Creech, Ms. Ruby, and Monique Culbertson, the final member of the steering committee. So we thought we'd say, what has the steering committee been doing? Really, the steering committee guides the entire process. Spent a lot of time troubleshooting, spent a lot of time encouraging, Spent a lot of time answering questions, helping to identify resources and evidence as the standards committees create their reports. And one of the big things that we hadn't really been planning to do, but we've also found time to provide opportunities for the standards committee chairs to collaborate with one another when things got difficult and stressful. And the opportunity for them to sit down in the same room and talk about what was happening with their committees and work through their problems together. It's really been a powerful thing. And then finally, we've also been a clearinghouse for the resources of, and evidence located outside of the high school. So we're really trying to minimize the number of phone calls, mostly to central office, mm -hmm. from individual groups seeking <coughs> evidence. And so we tried to run all of those requests through the steering committee so that we could ask each person we needed to talk to just once instead of lots and lots of emails. Mm -hmm. And finally, we're beginning the development process for the NEAS site visit next fall. Um, just as a reminder, these are the standard committee's chairs. 
and the standards that we're rating ourselves against. So Erin Landry Fowler is an art teacher. She's running the core values, beliefs, learning expectations. And I'm not going to read the slide to you because that would drive me crazy if I was listening to this. <laughs> I'll just let you look at that for a moment. Okay, the next slide is sort of a, takes you through the process that we're using to approve these standards reports. So initially the groups gather, they gather evidence, and they rate their standard. There are a series of indicators for each standard, and each indicator needs to be rated based on evidence that we can produce and show the visiting committee. So as they go through that process, they generate a report, usually 10 to 15 pages, and then from that report, we'll generate an executive summary and a list of strengths and needs. Once that's completed, that goes to an internal school website, the NEASC website, so that all staff have an opportunity to download and view the reports and the executive summaries. So then once that's complete, we send those reports to the departments. The departments, each department has a representative from each standard. So those executive summaries are read at the department meeting. Department members comment, agree, disagree, provide feedback. The committee member from that department takes that information back to their committee. They meet one more time consider the feedback, they may change their report, they may not. Whatever they choose to do, that will then be updated to the new, well, to the website again, so that staff can reread the report. And finally, at that point, comes to a faculty meeting, and there's a paper ballot. So we'll have the paper ballot. We need a two-thirds majority to pass those. And I'm happy to say, yesterday we passed our first two by unanimous vote. That was great. And I just want to say that cycle really mirrors the whole decision making process at the high school. So we tried to make that reflect the way Ms. Creech is sort of runs decision making through the high school. All right. Next report is the standards report timeline. This is how we're sort of keeping track, making sure we're on progress. In the left column, each department reviews and provides feedback. That is the date of the department meeting at which any one standard will be discussed. So for example, next Thursday, 3-9, standard report one, which is the core values group, their report will be on the website, their executive summary will be on the website, staff members will be expected to have read the report the executive summary, they'll come to a department meeting and the department will provide feedback to the representative from the core values group. That will then go back to the core values group. There's a meeting, a NEAS meeting, I believe it's on the 21st. So that group will meet, consider the feedback, finish the report, update the website, and then the following day, there's a faculty meeting. Faculty meeting will come in, we'll read the new executive summary, and vote up or down on, on that. And that cycle works through. We have three coming up here in March, and then we have the last two in May. So hopefully by May 18th, we'll be done, at least with the reports. <laughs> That's Mr. Creech oh. allowed you to have some cool transitions, which is rare. He usually just makes the guests share. Those are his transitions. <laughs> you had we, to didn't think, we didn't think he was going to let you make the transitions, but just that you could share the presentation that hey, contained them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what are our next steps? Where are we headed uh, on March 21st? Scarborough High School will be hosting an EASC evaluation seminar for our steering committee and the steering committees of four other high schools. And that's 
the last step with an EASC representative to sort of go through what is going to be expected of us during the site visit and how to prepare for that. Um, as groups finish, so yesterday two groups finish, how are they going to spend their professional development time moving forward? So the first thing that we did with those groups yesterday was look at that, their statement of strengths and needs, and prioritize those strengths and needs. Because eventually the steering committee is going to have to develop a list of strengths and needs for the entire school. And we just felt it would be more, it'd be a better process for the group that developed and wrote the report that their priorities should be reflected in that rather than ours. And then once they did that, we asked them to identify some of the strengths and needs that they think they could contribute to and possibly gain some good professional development. And they'll begin the process of working on those needs. Uh, and then finally, we'll be preparing for the NEAC visit, and that is the next slide. So what are we doing to prepare for the NEAC visit? Well, one, Mr. Huntington has been gracious enough to offer up well, actually, he didn't offer. We went to him. <laughs> this video production two class. Hopefully, we'll produce this fall or this spring a video that will introduce the visiting committee to Scarborough High School and the Scarborough community at large. So they're working on that, and that video will be a part of our opening celebration or our welcoming celebration. The visit is from November 5th to November 8th. We would love it if the school board would attend the opening reception. That will be on Sunday afternoon, November 5th. And that video will be a part of it. There will also be a panel presentation from Scarborough High School that will include all sorts of people that we will find out at the evaluation seminar in two weeks. <laughs> right, and the last one other thing that we're doing right now is we're trying to identify some student ambassadors. So. Scarborough High School is a really big building, so as the visiting committee people come in, of course they'll have maps, but we'd really like to pair them up with a student anytime they're moving through the school. That'll give them an easy guide to get where they're going, but it'll also give them an opportunity to talk to students at Scarborough High School and find out what's really going on there. And hopefully they'll, that will serve us well. <laughs> All right. And lastly, what are some of the benefits that we've gotten to date? And I would say, for me, several high teachers are really focused on their classroom and their content. And they don't really have a, a lot of opportunities to work interdis uh, in interdisciplinary teams. And this process has been a very interdisciplinary process. <laughs> and those groups are get, to get together, they review current best practice, and then really what they're doing is they're comparing Scarborough High School to what NEASC has defined to be the ideal modern high school. So what are the things that are happening in an ideal modern high school, and how do we compare to that? And that's really a powerful process, because it allows us to identify the things that we think that we do well and take advantage of those, it also allows us opportunities for growth. And that's really, and it's growth that's been generated by the staff of the school, which is really a, a nice thing to do. One example, I thought I'd leave you with an example. Um, standards Group 4, which is assessment of four of and for student learning, identified early on in the process that Scarborough High School did not have 21st century learning skills a document that identified those skills. So that was definitely a need, but already at the district level, the district type has identified main learning results, the guiding principles of the learning results as our 21st century skills, and we're already looking at developing rubrics that will measure our students' achievement in those areas. So that, that's already an improvement 
and it's only marks. So that's what we've been up to. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any questions? I do, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, thank you. I like getting the updates on this because it's such a huge process and I don't think everyone's aware of the amount of work that goes into it. So I like getting the updates so we can all follow along of what exactly is happening. Um, when you're talking about the standards reports being online, are those on the school department website or are those no, on an internal website right now? They're on now? an internal website. Okay. <coughs> Um, and public, yeah. one other um, question I had, just more out of curiosity, is you talked about there's going to be a presentation with by NEAF for you and four other high schools. Yes. Who are the other high schools? In no the area? idea. You don't know. Oh. No. We're we just know we have to attend one. Coordinate. We, we were trying to find out w what it was all about. So when okay. I called down, or emailed our liaison at NEAF. He said you'll find out more in a few weeks. I see. And then. Uh, but, but they could be anywhere in New England, I guess, not. Correct. Just in Maine. Oh, okay. But we offer up Scarborough High School. Yeah. Just because we didn't. Nice. I think Dave asked me, well, do you know where that's going to be? And I said, no. And he said, well, why don't we. Right. You offer to hold it here. Let's come up with some dates that would work. And we Good. wrote back, and they jumped on that pretty quickly. So. Good. Good idea. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? I would just like to add a thank you to David O'Connor and the high school staff. I am so impressed at the thoroughness of this process and how detailed it is and how well it's been articulated and communicated. Um, I really do think I'm not a NEASC expert, but I'm not going to be surprised when NEASC tells us at the end of this that we have followed, we have created a model to be replicated. So I just want to thank Principal Creech and all the teachers at the high school um, for the work that they're doing because I know every time I hear about what you're doing, I'm just amazed at the depth and the thoroughness of the work. So thank you. Thank you. If I could leave two, with two things before we, we finish. The first is what David alluded to a minute ago. I think it's really important to reemphasize that what you heard me say to you about a year and a half ago in terms of the work that was going to be completed during this time and its true professional development, Dave gave an example of it really has been comprehensive, in-depth, interdisciplinary professional development that staff own. And like he mentioned, there are so many things that they're already identifying that we need or that we have for strengths, but that we're going to work on for needs that the district itself is aligning some of the work that we realize we needed to do. So it's, it's really dovetail nicely. Um, and that's true professional development. And we have a, a lot of work we have to do, but we're, in a, I think, in a good position for that. The second piece is I can't emphasize this enough. And that is it's a staff-led, staff-led, staff initiative. David O'Connor and Lauren Bornstein are fabulous teachers and they're fabulous school leaders. The staff respect them. They've guided them. They've supported them. They've worked collaboratively with Catherine and Monique and I and have done a fantastic job. And I think the success of this self-study is due in large part to the leadership of Lauren and David. Okay, Thank you. I just want to reiterate that when I was teaching, uh, the high school I taught at went through an accreditation and subsequent to that, I, I personally served on two visiting teams. And I can tell you when you serve as a visitor, it's not quite as in-depth a preparation as the high school preparing to receive the committee. But it, the committee takes it very seriously when it comes in to evaluate a school and not trying to say, well, we do it this way at our place or we do it. They're trying to look at standards, as David and the two Davids have told us about. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And the results it can only help our school because the le even the last time that we went through it at, at Scarborough High School, the result was we had a major renovation because the needs <coughs> were identified that part of the problem was, in fact, the facility. So... We have the perfect facility at the present time, so I'll bet we're going to get a great evaluation. Great. Mm -hmm. That's great news. Anyone else? Any other? Okay, thank you. We are now moving on to 8.0.
the chair's report. <coughs> I think it's appropriate we start with um, welcoming our newest member, Mary Starr. <laughs> um, newly elected and certified results last night by the town council, so she's able to join us tonight. And we are thrilled you're going to be with us. And welcome. Do you have anything you'd like to say? A statement you'd like I to make? I am, I am happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to getting to work and uh, working with everybody and uh, supporting our students. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's going to be a smooth transition. So thank you. Mary's been an, an engaged parent and citizen for a long time, so we've known her through various meetings and committee groups. So thank you for coming to the comfortable chairs. That's what I told her last night. Like, <laughs> boot up to the comfortable yeah. chair. <laughs> it's, I don't know if all those things are worth it, but right now yeah. <laughs> you're in the comfortable chair. It's, all good. <laughs> yeah. it's a good start. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I also want to recognize um, all our athletic teams that went far into the postseason and uh, made us all really proud. And there's still some teams. Hockey. Hockey. Hockey's still in, correct? Boys hockey, yeah. Yep. Hockey. So um, proud of all our student athletes. So hard work, juggling, but they're amazing groups that can make it work. So we're happy for them. And also, I don't know if we're stealing your thunder, Lizzie. So you can, but the Maybe, one that. I don't know. I have. Okay. A lot. So okay. It's all right. So I also want to recognize the one act theater team. Ooh. It's uh, there are competitions coming up. It's not just about the athletes. The theater students have a one act competition coming up at Morse High School, and the um, practices are ridiculously long and thorough. So I expect good results um, oh, from, that, from that team. <laughs> so it is. I don't know the date. It's next. The competition is next Saturday. Friday and Friday Saturday, Saturday at Morse High School, and our home shows are this weekend. And what time is it this Friday? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have evening shows that start at 7. And the show is less than an hour? Yep. Okay. So Ideally, less than 40 minutes. So. Right? That's mm -hmm. the rules, right? 40 minutes? Yep. Um, it's an interesting thing I didn't know about before this year, but it's all completely student-led, acted, tech, everything, and they have a time <laughs> limit, and um, schools from all over Maine are coming to Morse, correct? Yes. Um, it's five Class A schools and Four Class B schools are going to be at Morse, and there's going to be one from each class that moves on to the on. state competition. Right. But there are more than there's more than one site. Yes, there's more than one festival. Mm -hmm. So there's one at Falmouth, I believe, uh, maybe one at Thornton, um, and they all have somewhere between seven and eleven yep. schools competing. Okay. So great. So we look forward to hearing the results Ooh, yeah. at the next <laughs> meeting. Um, also, I want to talk about um, last night, Jackie and Mary and Superintendent Cookenberger and I all attended the um, Boys to Men presentation of The Mask You Live In, which was, um, the movie is very powerful, definitely older student, mature content, but um, it's, it's a very... Um, unfiltered look at what it means to be a boy in our culture right now and the expectations on how you represent yourself and how you deal with other people and the main boys men project is going to be working in our middle school and high school and helping <coughs> students um, have more respectful relationships and the way they communicate with others and it should be an overall like fantastic impact for all students um, but last night was kind of the kickoff with the with the movie presentation, student leaders have been trained, but I think we'll be hearing more about them over the months and years, and I think um, we're very lucky to have it in our in our school district. I think it's going to be, we'll see results almost immediately. Um, and so I thank everyone that brought them to Scarborough because um, we're very lucky that we also don't have to pay anything for this great curriculum and program. So, um, and one last thing I want to remind people that the parent and guardian survey has gone out about school start times and I know some people may not have received it if their email was not correct in our system um, there may have been a glitch but if you have not received it you can email Kelly Johnston at kjohnston at scarboroughschools.org and we are really hoping that um, we get a lot of feedback because that's how we're going to be able to see where everyone is with this and what challenges are ahead of us. Um, um, just to kind of sum it up for people that haven't seen the survey, we did put some times on there um, so you know what we're talking about. Um, and 
the times are not set in stone, but what we're thinking right now is um, K to 5 would begin at 8 o'clock and release at 2.15, is that correct, or 2.25? 225. 2.25. 2.25. Um, middle school would be 9 o'clock to 3.25, and high school, 8.45 to... 8.50 to 2.15. 8.50 to 2.15. Yeah, <laughs> merge into your brain probably. Um, <clears throat> and we are, um, like I said, hoping to get feedback from everyone at all phase levels. And we've had questions from incoming kindergarten parents wondering if they could also complete the survey. Um, the survey as it's set right now, it's almost half of it is what happens now. Does your child ride the bus? Does your child participate in after school activities? So it wouldn't be as appropriate for an incoming kindergarten parent to answer. So we still want your feedback. Um, feel free to email the board, um, contact the school department, whatever works for you. We are um, hoping to have all the data collected. We have one more week. The survey closes on March 8th and so far just as an update we've had um, over 1,200 responses from parents. Um, and keep in mind that you fill one out for each child, so that doesn't mean 1,200 families, but we have 1,200 responses, and we've had just over 100 staff complete the survey, okay. and um, students will also, students in grades 6 through 12 will also be completing the survey, but they have not yet submitted the data. So um, it closes on March 8th for all students, staff, and parents, so <coughs> if um, parents or staff have not yet filled it out uh, and you need the link, just let us know and we'll send it to you. Great. Um, yes, I have one question. May I make one remark about the boys to men presentation? And, and I want to make the remark so it goes into the record. But one of the items that was emphasized in the presentation was the influence that coaches have on young men. And we have excellent coaches here. But I wonder if coaches of our youth teams are as kind, and kind is the word I want to use, because they have to have an understanding of the young personality and treat everybody with respect. And I just hope it will filter down through the parents and through the school department to how much influence those coaches have. I have a question about the student survey for <coughs> the start school leader. Um, how are they, ac are they accessing that at one particular time or were they sent an email like the parents were? The, the email went to the principals and the principals are coordinating when the students will take the survey during the school day. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Um, so what I've been telling people, I went to the kindergarten registration on Monday night and those parents are actually, um, they're curious, they're kind of anxious because their babies are starting kindergarten, but one of the questions they had was, what's the schedule going to look like? And so what I've told them and what I continue to tell people is, expect there will be a change, expect there will be a later start time for the older phase levels and an earlier start time for younger phase levels. We just don't have the exact times right now. Um, I know it doesn't make it easier for planning purposes for childcare or for jobs, but we're hopefully going to be able to work as fast as we can and we've set the deadline of um, April 1st to really have it firm and have the decision made. So um, again, just really urge people to fill out the survey and get in touch with us. Because um, the more we know in advance, the better prepared we'll be when we make the decision. So, okay, going on to committee reports, 9.0. Want to start um, down here, Jackie? Do you want to start? <coughs> committee reports? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I attended the Maine School Boards Association uh, Executive Committee meeting last week, and we uh, had. Uh, Senator Langley, who chairs the Education and Cultural Affairs Committee, and Representative Hubble, who was on appropriations and was for a long time on the Education Committee for the legislature. There, 
is a lot of legislation that can impact us. Uh, Representative Hubble has assured our committee that there is certainly enough money to fund uh, education, even if we, to the 55% level. So that is the aim of the legislature, to get to that 55% level this year so that they don't have to deal with the referendum question, quite frankly. Now, whether or not that will transpire, who knows. The second thing is there is a huge push at the leg legislative level to take the uh, retirement fund back to the state and not as a burden for communities. And those were the two biggest issues that they talked about. Uh, there was some conversation around the table. As you know, our committee represents all of the state as school board members, and there was a lot of uh, questions around uh, the need for funding to improve facilities and the need for funding uh, for public schools as opposed to the charter schools. That we don't need more public charter schools. And it appears as though the legislature will not approve to expand that. You know, it's capped at 10, but there's a bill in to, I think, make it go to, let it go to 20, but they don't think that's going to pass. So that's a synopsis of, uh, as I say, they were very positive about the funding piece. And I'm just holding my breath, as mm -hmm. I'm sure if Everybody else is. As far as the next step, uh, uh, the budget hearing is, is it Friday? Tomorrow. Uh, and our superintendent is going. And if anybody wishes to comment, they can certainly write it up and send it in to the uh, appropriations. And then with regards to what's going on in town, we are continuing to meet in negotiations uh, with our bus drivers. And uh, we are on a subcommittee uh, looking at uh, coaching stipends. Kelly, can I just ask Jackie a quick question? Sure. Um, so is the goal to, of getting to 55% coming from Main School Board Association or coming from? Um, from the legislature. Oh. From okay. the legislature. Because they don't want to have to deal with the referendum. They think that the referendum is, is going to, well, there are some people in the legislature think that if the referendum is enforced, so to speak, and that perhaps that's not a good word, but that we will lose business in the state of Maine. So their aim Evidently, the money's there. Mm -hmm. that, that was the indication. Uh, the money dollars. is there. Billion so dollar one surplus. Billion dollars. So why haven't they? That's the, Who knows? <laughs> the money's there, but oh, let's not fund that properly. But under okay. the map. Sorry, I, was just, I just wanted to be clear on where that was coming from. Yeah, and is that bipartisan? Like the representatives that were there, is that a bipartisan? Are both? Yes. Seem like uh, a, a Representative group? Hubble is a Democrat, and Senator Langley is a Republican. Uh, they have worked together for, for many years. They're both from the uh, same area. They're up from the Ellsworth Bar Harbor area, both of them. You know them? No? <laughs> but, uh, so they have worked for many years together. Carrie, okay. communications? Uh, yeah, uh, communications um, is meeting tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and we're working on getting out our next um, newsletter issue, which I'm hoping to have out maybe Monday, um, covering start times, proficiency-based education, community dialogue, variety of exciting topics. So watch for that and subscribe if you haven't yet. <laughs> um, one thing I did want to mention about that, um, I happened to talk to a staff member this week that said, they didn't think that they got the school board newsletter because we've had it opt in for that. I was wondering if we could just opt in all the staff because <laughs> it's relevant, right? <laughs> so 
we can talk about that, but it seemed like, because when I was saying that we have a newsletter, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, we have, we have a newsletter. We do things. We have things. So <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it would be a good idea to <laughs> pump out what we're doing to staff. So I'm sure we can talk about that. Yes. <coughs> Nothing no, on long-range facilities at the moment. The only thing I would add to that, we haven't met. Um, the long range facility plan hasn't met, but Todd is working very hard um, to complete our four applications. And on Tuesday, uh, Todd and I are going up to Augusta to meet with the commissioner and then also um, Scott Brown, who is um, the chair of the construction work at the department level. So I'm not saying his title right, but um, we have meetings with both of them. So our plan is to be able to ask any final question, any questions that we have in the development of the application, but also to get a sense of um, what's happening around funding of the buildings and the school buildings, school facilities in the state of Maine, because it really is uh, becoming quite dire across the state. No question. Um, Donna's not here, but I can report out on policy. Um, our next meeting is Thursday, March 23rd at 9.15 in the morning. Um, it's an off week for meetings, but it's the first time Donna will be back in town. So we're going to take a um, hard look at all of the policies that will be affected by proficiency-based diplomas and kind of pull those out and see what needs to be updated and how it's going to all fit together with the new world we're about to enter. Um, and that's pretty much the big project we have going on besides our regular culling that we do <laughs> of the policy manual. I know this. Okay, so on to finance. Okay. So it's been a big day of finance, I would say. Yeah, I would say. Um, earlier today at 2 o'clock, we had the joint finance committee meetings with the town council <laughs> finance committee meeting. Um, where we talked a lot about the budget forum, which is coming up in April, and trying to talk about how that would be formatted if we would change that um, and how it would look. So we decided that we would send out a quick survey. It will be v very short because I think um, after all of these other surveys, people <laughs> are sort of surveyed out. Um, so it will be very short, just sort of getting a feel for if you've attended in the past, what did you like about it? What could we change? But if you haven't attended, why didn't you attend? Is it the timing? Is it the day? Is it because it's two hours long? So trying to get a gauge on what the community would like this forum to be because it really is driven by community members' questions. So stay so tuned for another survey. <laughs> Do you know how many non-employees attended last year? 21. So that was part of the the driving force in deciding that we need to change it up. Um, I think you know it's nice that we get the questions ahead of we get some of the questions ahead of time, and people can also ask um, or submit questions that night. Um, but once I submit my question as a citizen and it's it's answered and I can see it online, I don't need to take the two hours waiting for that answer to come up at the actual event. So. We're just trying to figure out how we can tweak that and make it more time efficient and valuable for the community. Maybe Facebook Live. I Somebody said that at the meeting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you really right. wanted Twitter. Well, of yeah. course. <laughs> um, and so then we also talked about the education budget, the, the governor's budget, and, and how that will affect Scarborough as it stands now. And so we, at this point, are scheduled to lose our um, $1.4 which would ultimately make us a minimal, minimum receiver within the state. Which is a title, like is a, as a label, minimum receiver, right? Yes, that's yeah, an that's official that's label. Either you, you fall under two, they determine it between two different categories based on special needs, funding over here or um, per pupil costs and whatever is the bigger number you get um, because frankly we fell below that so they have to give us one of those two options. So um, having said that, it, this is 
the starting point. We're all hopeful that it will change maybe along the way, but we're not um, overly optimistic that it will change in a large way. So we're on top of it. Julie, again, is going up tomorrow to um, advocate for some um, changes. And one of the things that is happening with this governor's budget is that he's making changes to the EPS formula through the budget process, which is not how it should be done. Um, and so those 48 changes are, make a lot of impact on, on communities like Scarborough. So um, hopefully people can get up there tomorrow and, and testify. I think it's, it's really important for community members to, to speak up. They, they hear from us over and over again, but to see how um, the process works and to hear from community members can have a big impact. Uh, so we'll continue to update throughout that process because, again, it's just the start, so there will be a lot of updates along the way. And to give you sort of an idea, we got a spreadsheet from Kate Bolton, the business um, manager, and Scarborough's state subsidy in 2009 was $7 million. In 2018, we're slated to receive $2.1 million, million, which is a 70% reduction-ish. In 2009, in the height of the recession, I will also point out. Yeah. Yeah, so. that, that hasn't been translated to FY17 dollars, but it does still show the consistent decline. Um, and so then we also briefly spoke about uh, budget drivers, and those don't change for us year to year because there's such small um, amounts of investment, frankly, that the budget drivers for us are our staff and insurance and, and those sorts of um, expenses that we know about year after year. And, and so for us, those budget drivers don't really change unless there's a huge flux within um, the state revenue is where we see it. But for us, we're, we have to focus and, and continue to look at expenses and, and where we need to invest. Um, and then earlier before this meeting at 6 p.m., we had just a school board finance meeting. And we sort of recapped that discussion from this afternoon and, and sort of um, dug a little deeper into what was discussed and where we want to focus. And then we also got an update on the leadership budget development process that is currently happening. And again, that is ongoing, so there's no major news to report. I think as, as the budget cycle continues and leadership finalizes their their budget will start to see um, where we can invest and what makes sense moving forward. Thank you. Student representative report. Okay. So some of this you've already heard, but I'm going to say it anyway. So yesterday um, was the main boys to men film screening of Matthew Livin, which is film that kind of talks about society's idea of masculinity and how that can be toxic to the health and wellness of young boys and how that kind of transfers into the rest of their lives. Um, I was very disappointed because I really wanted to go, but homework's got to get done sometime. It's on um, YouTube, right? The whole movie, I think, is on YouTube. Um, but I actually have Netflix. friends Netflix. who went. Netflix. Netflix. I have friends who went and um, a couple of my friends actually were on the student panel and they said that it went over really well. So Very good students. They're great. Excellent. Um, so on Saturday, March 11th, there is going to be a concert in the SHS cafeteria that's called Music for Miracles um, and it's going to be um, different student bands from the area um, and all the proceeds from that event are going to go to Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. So that's really cool. Um, and there are going to be different uh, high school organizations there selling food and drinks and stuff. So that should be fun. Um, tomorrow is the opening night of the high school one act play, Dear Chuck. Um, and the play is about kind of discovering who you are, or as we call it during the show, finding your Chuck. Mm -hmm. So um, the shows are this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7. Um, and the house opens at 6.30. And we would love to have as many people come out as possible and support us. 
uh, before we head to Morse High School in Bath for our competition next weekend. So it should be fun, and it's not long. So, um, <laughs> so March 24th, which is a Friday, there is going to be a chorus concert at 7 p.m., um, which is going to be featuring the concert, men's, women's, jazz, and select choruses. So that should be super fun. I have a lot of friends in chorus, and they've been playing me bits of what they've started rehearsing, and it sounds fantastic as usual. So um, this Saturday, which is the 4th, um, Scarborough High School is going to host the State Academic Decathlon uh, competition. So that is from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and that is actually why Thomas could not be here with us tonight, because he texted me and said, I just have too much to study for for Saturday, and <laughs> they normally do really, really well, so we wish them a really good luck. Do you that. know what time Super Quiz is? Does anyone know what time that is? Usually around 4. The one audience thing that people can see? I think so. I'm not sure. I think it's normally closer towards the end. So, um, so yes, we wish them Four. luck with that. Um, Four o'clock. Yeah, super quick. Four. Awesome. Thank you. So, boys hockey won their last game against Biddeford, so that means they're advancing to the semifinals, which are also Saturday, I believe. And um, although I scoured lots of websites and Twitter, I couldn't find the time or location of that. So. 8 p.m. Nice. Colise. Yes. In Lewiston. Um, in Lewiston. Yep. Um, and <laughs> girls and boys in North Track also, uh, they both won their state championship meet, which is awesome. Um, just super impressive. Um, at the middle school, so there's going to be eighth grade information night, which is March 6th at 6 p.m. at the high school. They're going to be doing tours and stuff and kind of getting night them night. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, and then, great parents. yeah, yeah. Um, so the middle school musical, so their theater group, um, have their shows in the middle of this month. So it's all at the high school. Um, it's March 17th and 18th and 19th, and it's at 6 p.m. the 17th and 18th, and then 2 p.m. also on the 18th and the 19th. So, and they're doing High School Musical, which should be really fun. And I have friends who are involved in putting on the production, and they said that the kids are all super talented and just doing it far beyond their years, which does not surprise <laughs> me. So that should be fun. Um, March 8th at 6 p.m., girls and boys basketball at the middle school are going to do a competition against the staff, um, which should be interesting. So and that takes place um, at the high school, and that's to benefit Red Storm Strikes Out Cancer. And the girls' team is going to play at 6, and the boys' team is going to play at 7. And that is all I have today. So Great. Lots of stuff. That's a lot of things. Don't that's worry. a lot of things. That's a lot of things. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. And so now we are on to new business. 11.1, uh, the meeting minutes of February 2nd, 2017. Move approval is printed. Second. Any changes or comments? Or? I wasn't here, so I lost them. Okay. Mary obviously yeah. wasn't here, so. Okay, all in favor? Okay, four plus one. Thank you. And 11.2, <coughs> it's a second reading of policy JICIA. It's the weapons violence in school safety policy. Move approval is printed. Second. And there are not any changes from the first reading. So, any questions or comments about that? No? Okay. All in favor? Count Yeah, because Donna's not here. No, six. Six, six for fun, yeah. <laughs> the number's new, so it's not. <laughs> but Donna's not, so we're subtracting. Six <laughs> plus one. Okay. Good. That's right. Okay, that takes us to 12.0 adjournment. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Six plus one. Thank you. We are adjourned.